Hi, I'm Curtis Barr with Polypixel, and I'm going to do a quick rundown of the Urban City Pack and, more importantly, the road system. Um, in the latest update, um, we're going to have a little breakdown scene to just show some of the more uh, hidden details and more advanced uh, features that the pack contains. So there's just a th couple things like uh, showing um, material types on buildings. This is a quick little prototype of randomizing windows for when you're building uh, uh, buildings modularly. So this this is like a full static mesh that's uh, imported as one prop. This is so you can build your own. So that way you can get um, randomized uh, emissive windows that way. Um, there's um, new uh, power lines with uh, spline systems for the lines itself. There's some vertex painting on the bottom. There's just some uh, vertex painting breakdowns uh, and some of the wind stuff. Uh, and yeah, and then there's uh, actually a new uh, traffic light system. Um, all the lights in the scene are, uh, you can toggle them on or off individually now. Um, there's a new traffic system, so if you wanted to say like east to west is a certain sequence, and then you can go north to south is an offset sequence, uh, fairly easy. And that'll have a um, traffic light system that's uh, pretty much working. Uh, there's a few other small things, but uh, more importantly, I just wanted to go over the roads and kind of a quick little tutorial on how to get these roads working. Um, so I guess I'll start by saying that the original roads in the demo scene are actually um, the modular parts exported into Maya, built out there, and then imported as a long stretch of like a, a block uh, or a, a corner street or something like that. Um, you can do that now with the, the latest update uh, because we have included all the FBX files. We didn't do that before because we didn't think there would be a big need for it, and it was just increasing the size of the downloads. Um, but after some uh, vocal complaints, we've decided, you know, it's worth it to add those in there. So now um, every asset in the pack, you can um, just hit uh, right click, uh, open source, and you should be able to open it up in um, Maya. And you can do what we did with the uh, demo scene. But uh, more importantly, I think we, I think we, this time around, we did like a focus on trying to get the spline systems to work. So we had some people... Um, trying to build it through static meshes, one, two, three, four, which you can do, um, but it's going to increase um, the amount of assets you have in the scene, and it's going to be quite heavy, and there'll probably be like lighting issues and stuff like that. But I think the biggest problem would be um, using that versus the splines, like this, is you can't quite get this kind of effect where you're tilting it and rotating it and stuff like that. So, yeah, so. That's the whole idea of the splines. And so what I've done here is I've created just a quick little example of the the more important things you'd have to you'd come across if you're building an entire uh, grid system. Uh, I think I have a little straightaway with uh, different types of sidewalks on one side, uh, different sidewalks on the other, a nice little corner intersection, a straight through um because it's a three-way and then like a chicane up a hill which is probably the most intricate thing you can get across so all this is done through splines um more uh, specifically the landscape splines you could use um just a regular spline tool um epic has a tutorial on their youtube channel that does uh um just a little racetrack course and it's all done through splines and how to create them through the blueprints and stuff like that so you can create your own little spline editor and it essentially does the same kind of effect as this but uh just to keep this pretty simple this is more for showcasing how to do it and giving you the assets required so you can go ahead and make splines so i th I think the first time around we had some complaints about sidewalks, so this time we've had all the sidewalks, we've kind of stress tested this a little bit more, and um, I feel like this is, should this should get your packs and your cities probably completely done, and if you needed something a little bit more intricate, like off ramps and stuff like that, uh, you should definitely be able to do that. Um, okay, so 
before I get started on how I created the modular parts and how to best utilize the uh, assets to the spline system, I just want to quickly give you a rundown on how to create a spline really, really quick. So uh, with a landscape in your scene, you just go to the Manage tool, uh, Edit Splines, and then Control click on your terrain. Create another point, and then you can keep adding points after the fact. Uh, you can click away, and if you want to extend it, so if you've deselected it, just go to your last point, or or this point, as in this case, just go here, and just hit Control click again, and there you go. So now with splines, it's great because you can just move these up and down, all around, and the fun thing is with the landscape spline tool, you can actually snap the, the landscape to the spline and it will actually fit itself and create a slope. So it's actually very convenient uh, when you want to quickly iterate on stuff like that. So um, one little trick is, so say you delete this and it'll continue through. So if I didn't want so many points, I didn't need them, you just delete it uh, and let it flow through. And if you want to add it back in, just See, I'm selecting the segments. You can go to segments, hit control click where you want it. And there you go. Got it back again. And you can do it again. And so on and so on. But I'll just, for the sake of this, I'm just going to do uh, just a few. Now, to add a mesh to the spline, what you have to do is, so you'll see this mesh. That's actually not it because you're selecting the control point. Go to segments. So you can click on any part of it. Just make sure you go to segments. Then under landscape spline meshes, add a spline mesh, go here, and then click on one of the road assets that we'll have. And for this case, we'll just do a four lane. Um, and make sure to toggle scale to width off. So there you go. Now you got the full uh, width of the actual static mesh. Very cool part about um, the static meshes or the splines and the static mesh is that it will stretch the static mesh to a certain breaking point and then it'll add another part in between. So you can extend this and the texture scale does not stretch with it. It's very, very uh, clean and tidy and I like it a lot. So I just want to make sure that's clear. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it um, to how to create the roads. And now how I've done this is I've added sidewalk or crosswalks to the end of it to keep the intersections nice and uniform and and so I'm creating a nice little placeholder for all the intersections. So to do that, just select the, don't grab the road, grab the control point that you want. So in this case, this guy right, what is going on here? Let's bring him closer because he's conflicted with something. And then, now under under mesh, so under your control point, now under this mesh, oops, I selected all the control points, yes. Under this mesh, you'll want to select the corresponding crosswalk. So the corresponding one being the size. So if I have all these crosswalks, and these lengths should all be the same, or the name the same as the road. So if I go four lane, it'll fit perfectly. And if I rotate, it'll just snap to it nice and neat. And do the same for this side, except that when I do it, it's going to actually want to go X forward like that one. So we'll just have to tell it to go minus one on the X. Um, all these roads, intersections, crosswalks, sidewalks are all snappable and um, to the grid. And then like these sidewalks, these are about two meters wide, so I think it's 200 units. And uh, so they should all snap to the grid. So ideally, which when you were making these, you don't want the location to be at these arbitrary numbers. You want it to keep it pretty clean and pretty tidy. Um, now, the rotation, that's another thing, but we'll get to that. So I have all this, let's just get rid of this, get rid of that. And there we go. So there we go. That spine's gone. So you'll notice that I've actually created these splines so that the roads and the sidewalks are separate. The reason for that is 
this you might not want sidewalks with your roads and you might want different types of sidewalks you want big ones uh barriers anything like that um so i found it best to keep the two separate and that to compensate for that there's just a little bit of rework as far as creating another spline doing the same setup where i'm adding a sidewalk and then snapping it to it so as long as the grid points are um, the location is all nice and even these are pretty even too and then they just snap right off to the side perfectly um, so that should be easily fit yeah so now the trick here is with so the corner one was pretty basic I just made uh, some points you can control the depth and um, the curvature of the uh, splines through these control points on the segment. And so here's the, the, the tricky part. So on this part, this was really easy. It was just you snap, you snap. But in this case, if you snap, you'll notice that you can create a bit of a gap. So the workaround for this wasn't too hard. It was a little bit of effort. Just a minute or so, just finding the gap, grabbing grabbing the, the um, segment, adding that extra control point, and then placing it on top. And then it just ha took about a handful of of uh, spline pieces, and it fit pretty nicely. Um, yeah, so I found that worked uh, pretty well, and it pretty much did the trick. Um, and so we talked about this, that, that. Just trying to think if there's anything I need else I need to go over. Oh, and then the intersection. Um, so, yeah, the intersection. <laughs> um, because of the amount of variations you can get through the size of the roads and the types of intersections, I think the math that I came to was that if I wanted to make, create a mesh for each intersection size, it would have been over six hundred thousand static meshes. Um, yeah, so. To, that's not doable. So to uh, to do the roads or the intersections, what I've done is as long as these points are snapped to even uh, grids, you can snap the, a BSP brush to it. So these are just done through BSP brushes. You can go in and make a static mesh, but the BSP brush should do the trick um, and then place the asphalt on top, and then you can do... Um, all your UVing and stuff like that, and it should work um, fairly well. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Just yeah, create your segments, or your control points, add the road that you want to the segment, add crosswalks to the ends. If you want, add um, sidewalks, snap them to the side of the road. Um, you can change the visual type of just a the entire sidewalk being a planter or you can go in like I tried to do briefly but uh, unsuccessfully but go into the segments and add your yellow sidewalk and your straight sidewalk um, then much like the crosswalk actually the sidewalk you'll need to add the end piece as well and then for the most intricate ones, you'll just have to add a few, couple of control points to keep the spline uh, centered. It's not uh, the end of the world. And yeah, and then just a BSP for the intersection. So that is pretty much it. Um, you could probably create a city grid within just a few hours. And yeah, I think that uh, pretty much sums up this video. Thank you for watching.